Okay, so we're the uh, Growers First uh, business to consumer team. Uh, my name is Brett Drake. I'm Melanie Wong, Serena Rubin, Chapel St. James. So Growers First main goal for us was to raise awareness of the mission and product um, on GW campus. So what we did was we tried to specifically focus on on-campus consumers such as students, faculties, and um, professional young professionals that work here. Um, a number one goal for us was to figure out consumer behavior. The main goal for business consumer marketing involves understanding the buying decisions of your consumers, such as why they buy and the emotional perspective of their purchase. So one of the things we have to do is figure out what motivates um, on-campus consumers to purchase premium coffee. Um, this involves um, developing a comprehensive market research plan and effective business consumer marketing will utilize this to develop a further marketing plan. All right, so our initial plan was uh, essentially a three-tier approach um, that was uh, supported by social media, Facebook, Twitter, and we actually also went into Wikipedia. Um, so it started out uh, with market research. Um, so a preliminary um, survey that kind of gauged um, consumer preferences and general knowledge of sustainability and, of course, um, specific knowledge of Growers First, um, the organization. Um, and then we moved on to um, a guerrilla marketing and promotional plan um, that we wanted to blanket campus uh, with promotional materials for Growers First, um, trying to educate the, the student population on what Growers First is, um, what they're all about, and what the, the product that we're um, trying to market is. And then these promotional activities would lead up to um, a sustainability day, um, which was a, the the thought was an all-day event in Kogan Plaza um, that we would invite student orgs, uh, relevant student orgs, to, to table with us. Um, orgs such as Green GW, um, GW Students for Fair Trade, um, and other ones you see listed there. And basically what it was is to create awareness um, on campus to have um, kind of a, a, a physical presence on campus. And then of course, trying to generate aware awareness among relevant student organizations to then um, have the this kind of sustainability leaders to disseminate that information back to their members and then throughout campus. Um, and then we would follow up with a final survey um, that kind of gauged any difference um, in consumer awareness uh, for Growers First. So. Okay, so originally for our implementation plan, for our actual plan that we were putting um, into uh, effect, we wanted to come up with uh, a survey originally to be distributed before holding this event and after so that we can actually see on GW's campus how we've affected the awareness and how we've been able to change the mindsets of buying behavior decisions for our consumers. Um, that being said though, however, we had only uh, taken into account GW since that was the actual consumer segment we were targeting. Uh, for our project and so we were only actually designing the questions for the GW marketplace. However, due to uh, um, time constraints and everything with the SurveyMonkey account, Growers First was able to provide us with a SurveyMonkey account that they did create and we were able to put in our questions that um, we revised a bunch of times different drafts with the team at Growers First and then we were able to input it into the SurveyMonkey account. And after our final green light go, um, which was actually yesterday. <laughs> um, we have now broadened the design of the SurveyMonkey uh, survey actually to correspond with all college campuses to be able to distribute it much more widely and actually broaden the scope of the uh, college students that we're going to target so that way uh, Growers First can really use this in the future and other people can really start using this research especially since we noticed that in the market secondary research for specific college student coffee consumption trends were quite scarce. So um, if we click on the survey, we'll take you to um, our actual survey. Oh, it should. Yeah. And basically, you see, um, if you hit no, it completely shuts you out. But if you hit yes, just to show you a couple of the questions, um, we're just trying to get a real feel for exactly the consum coffee consumption trends on college campuses. And there really isn't enough secondary research, if any, that really breaks it up in terms of college campus consumption versus in-home, making meaning brewing your own coffee, versus buying it you know, from Starbucks and things like that. 
why people drink coffee, when, where, how long they've been drinking coffee, and to really try to understand our consumers better. Because as Mel mentioned to begin with, it's very important in the business to consumer marketing that you really understand who your consumers are, what they want, and how to get it to them in order to penetrate this market. Um, just really quick, we have on the other side, it's just a little excerpt you guys have all probably seen by now. Um, and the emails that we're sending out to people just to understand a little bit more about Growers First and why we're sending out this survey so that they take it and they have a little bit more of an understanding before going into it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about social media. Um, obviously, social media is one of the biggest up-and-coming marketing trends today. Um, and especially with younger consumers, we thought, you know, what's the best way to reach us since we are the target consumer and we all figured out, you know, we spend a lot of time on social media. That being said, um, Growers First had a pretty active social media presence online when we started. They had, you know, their farmers had blogs, they had a Wheaton College blog, we were using our class blog. They had a Growers First page and they had a Twitter account. So we wanted to figure out the best way to target it towards GW students while raising awareness for their already active accounts. So we decided first to make a GW Growers First Facebook page. Um, this way we could attract people on campus. We thought that by adding the GW it would be a little more personal than just sending out you know, a link to a random um, Facebook page. So this oh, yeah. is, you're not signed in, so I don't think it'll show all the details, <laughs> but that's the general presence of the page. I'm sure a lot of you have liked us on Facebook, thank you, so you probably know a little more detail. Um, through that page, we were also able to create an event for our free coffee day, so we were able to invite almost a thousand students on campus, our friends and friends of friends and everything like that. So this way we were able to get the Growers First logo and message out to almost a thousand students on campus. Um, additionally, we decided to make a Growers First Wikipedia page. It's not yet published because there, there are some technicalities to getting it published, but this is what it will look like. Um, we decided, we noticed that they didn't have a Wikipedia page. Wikipedia is one of the first places that college kids go to online to find information. And it's a great way to have a nice summary of the organization online, what they do, and give exposure to the links that you can get further information for. Right now they have a lot of information on their website, but you know, you want to have a way to get the, the concise, important details for people to look at when they're looking. Um, additionally, you know, if other people are Googling the organization, this will be a way for them to get the quick bullet point. Um, so as you can see, we invited, you know, probably at least, we invited all of our friends on Facebook, we told everyone at the event about the, the fan page, and we invited, you know, everyone invited to the event on Facebook to the event. But as you can see, we got less than 60 responses. Um, at first, we were sort of disheartened by this, so we did some research. Um, there was a study by R2 Integrated published in June 2010, and it showed that 65% of respondents stay on interview companies, said that they have no increased revenue or profit using social media. So it's very common. While social media is an up-and-coming trend, it's hard for companies to find the most effective way to leverage that. And considering the short time frame that we had for the class project, um, we think with a gift with a larger time frame, we may have been able to effectively reach a larger audience. So, you know, we hope that we increased awareness via social media. We think that we did the best given the time constraint, um, and we also tried to effectively leverage what the company already had in existence. Um, as Brett said, our original plan was to launch an event, um, kind of like an environmental awareness day, that would involve as many parts of the GW community as possible. But uh, due to many factors, we were unsuccessful in doing so. So after several alternatives, we finally were able to find Net Impact, which is an undergraduate chapter here, and they inspire, well, their mission is to inspire and educate um, like individuals as such as ourselves to use business to kind of um, make an impact on the world and make it a more sustainable place. So through Net Impact, we actually um, partnered with the Dot Campaign, which is Asachi and Sachi S's um, Do One Thing campaign, which inspires, empowers individuals to kind of make a decision, a positive change in your daily routine to um, impact yourself or the planet or anyone else. Through um, the DOT campaign, we hope to um, kind of inspire the kids at GW to kind of make Growers First Coffee their DOT. And um, at the event, we had iPads and um, we had computers. So when they were entering their DOT, we were trying to um, kind of educate them of the mission and the product and actually we had a lot of people buy the coffee at the event so it worked out well. Um, we think that the thought launch 
Although DOT is not in every university because our main goal was trying to make um, a business consumer marketing plan that could be replicated at other universities, Net Impact is actually um, like a global presence and the graduate chapter was very interested in what we were doing and uh, we have been talking to people at the headquarters to see because we have a big support from the organization and partnering with DOT also gave us the opportunity to um, partner with other student organization uh, leaders such as um, fraternity and sorority presidents. We had um, NCAA athletes there with us and this was the best way to kind of get um, support from everyone in the community. So we think that Growers First should on campus um, take what we are doing and kind of find the best organization on campus to partner with because through contacts you can find other ways to implement it into the local community. Um, that being said as well, we also, uh, during the DOT campaign, uh, we did meet with somebody, a student here, that um, voiced a lot of interest because he was telling us about a sustainable student-run cafe that they want to be opening up, a co-op, um, on GW campus. And they were very interested in Growers First Coffee, and that would be a great um, type of thing to, to start doing for the future this way. As, as you can kind of tell in our initial plan, we had a lot of high aspirations that didn't quite work out as we'd hoped, but we tried to lay a foundation of a skeleton of some sort that can be replicated in the future, and we tried to really make um, connections with people and try to bridge that foundation. People can really understand and gain the exposure, and then therefore partnering with people, and actually making those connections with people um, to partner with, like the Sustainable Cafe, um, the cooperative, um, for the uh, empowerment of food services was very important to us as well. All right, <coughs> and we have a, a video that we're going to show you really quick. Um, just from our event. Growers First um, works with foster farmers to eradicate the economic and social injustices that occur <laughs> from Most of the proceeds, it's a non-profit organization, so most of the proceeds go directly to the farmers, and they believe in traceable transformation, which they've done in two ways. Um, the first is if you go to their website, growersfirst.org, there's a link to a blog, and each of the farmers has their own blog, so you can go and you can read about the farmers who are making your coffee. Uh, the second thing that you can do, if you have a smartphone, is you can download an app, and then you can scan the tab on the back of the top. Um, one of the biggest issues that we had with market research is initially we had thought about doing the survey before and after our event so we could see what impact that we had on GW campus. Um, however, working with this organization, we are obviously working on a campus, I mean, on campus, a semester long time frame, and they sort of have a bigger picture time frame. So I don't think we expressed our urgency maybe as, as, um, as much as we should have. So we didn't actually get the actual survey out until after the event. So unfortunately, we couldn't measure the impact that we had on the consumer's mind. Um, as we addressed on the social media side, there were response issues. It was harder than we imagined to get people to actually respond to our Facebook fan page um, and to the event on some level on social media. Finally, as far as the event, like we said, we originally planned on doing a sustainability day, but we encountered several issues. Um, the first is that we emailed between 15 and 20 student orgs that we had targeted as their, their goals were in line with, with ours. Um, unfortunately, only one of them actually responded to us via email. So that made you, know, you can't have the sustainability fair day with only us and one other group. Um, additionally, there was a lot of issues with the GW bureaucracy. We couldn't get space, and there was a lot of miscommunication with us in the event planning department. They didn't get back to us quickly enough, and so by that time, you know, we had to do something to get to gain awareness, and we weren't able to do the event at the scale that we wanted to. 
So we would say that the biggest issue was the time frame. Um, we wanted to do a lot, and we had a short amount of time to do it in. Okay. Um, as far as our recommendations, um, as you uh, as you mentioned before, um, we we ran into a couple roadblocks um, in kind of implementing the the full plan that we had wanted to. Um, we still believe that it's definitely a, a solid plan and a reproducible plan um, for other college campuses, but there are some specific things that need to happen at specific times. Um, the first is the preliminary market survey. Um, we found that we you need to be able to, to gauge uh, consumers, um, their their choices for coffee, how they how they consume their coffee, um, and kind of gauge their overall knowledge and their um, consumption trends. Um, we weren't able to do we weren't able to do this, so um, we then couldn't tailor our plan directly to um, the GW community. Um, the next is the promotional materials. Um, we didn't have enough. You need to literally blanket the campus um, in promotional materials, just so the, you can't walk around campus without seeing at least a couple of um, you know growers first in your face. So. Um, and then the, the establishment of the social media needs to happen right away and needs to be um, promoted everywhere that the, that the organization is promoted. So it needs to be continually um, updated, continually um, having people interacting with it. Um, so that's key. Um, what we found from basically just trial and error is that um, there were a couple things about the GW community that we thought might not be the best target for Growers First initially in DC at least. Um, and that was that our, our kind of urban campus um, led to um, not many people actually making coffee in their own rooms, in their own homes. Um, it's, it's a combination of there's um, a lot of instant substitutes available. Um, coffee consumption for college students is highly convenience based. Um, so you know, you run into class, you're like, oh no, I'm tired, I want to grab a coffee, or whatever, or I'm grabbing a coffee to study. Um, and then the, the fragmented schedule of most college students is another huge thing. Um, not many people have, you know, the, I get up at 7 in the morning, I've got an hour to get ready, make my coffee, um, and then go out on the day. A lot of us are kind of all over the place, um, you know, longer than normal days. Um, so there's, there's that issue. Um, we thought that it would be good to potentially aim for a different target market in D.C. Um, as the B2B was mentioning, um, they were targeting kind of specialty coffee shops, kind of the, uh, the higher end, um, Dini DeLuca type um, uh, grocery stores. Uh, we thought that would be probably the, the best demographic to hit those um, consumers that shop there. They're a little bit older, um, a little bit more wealthy kind of, I guess, market. Not, not so much as a luxury product, but something that maybe a, a stay-at-home mom is like, oh, I want to do something, and uh, I can, you know, buy sustainable coffee <laughs> that way. <laughs> so, um, so we thought, as a recommendation, um, in D.C., you might want to hit some other uh, markets such as that first. Um, and then kind of um, going back to our initial market survey, and if we had done that, we might have been able to identify that earlier and then tailor the market uh, marketing strategy towards that. And we also think that there could be a significant difference between an urban campus and like a closed uh, rural campus. Some, somewhere, um, I know they've had success at, at Wheaton College, I believe it was, mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's a totally different type of student, a totally different type of, um, I guess, environment that goes on um, at a different college campus. So being able to identify those differences and being able to really go in and um, take advantage of the different types of students was key. So, that's it. Any questions?